Thanks everyone for being here, and good morning. Uh, so, uh, so uh, I work at Strata, and people are talking a lot about big data is growing now. So, uh, if you look back like three years back, people are talking how you get some data, do some analysis, how cool it is, etc. But now things are changing. It's kind of start to, if people say it's on teens. You wouldn't like the new version as much as before because now it starts asking you hard questions. Like, how can I keep, like, okay, I did first, uh, first thing, it took two months, fine. Now how can I do the same thing every day with new data? What do you do when the data change? What do you do? What do you? Uh, what? How do you take better decisions? How you make sure they actually what you want, so on and so forth. Okay. So, uh, if you have been following WSO2 platform, you would know that actually we had two big data uh, products for uh, quite some time. I think more than three years. Uh, WSO2 BAM and WSO2 CEP. So at this point, actually, we tried to think very hard about how all these things fit together. Uh, you may have heard, actually, Sanju mentioned this. We, we are now releasing a product called WSO2 DAS, and we are removing BAM, but the DAS is the one product that collects connect everything together, right? So it's no longer you don't, you have to go and download like many different things connect for doing analytics. You know, it's everything on together. We still release the CEP uh, and we are adding a new product called WSO2 Machine Learner. We'll, I'll talk about that. Uh, but if you get DAS, you get everything. So now when you try to think uh, this, what's the new kind of analytics platform you need? There are four forms of analytics you would do, right? The so this, sorry, this picture try to present it. So the x-axis is the how long does it take to give you a response, right? The y-axis is how much data you could process, and First is batch. Batch actually include all these. These are the use cases where you could wait for a response to come, like generally uh, at least 10 minutes, right? So this is the most famous form of uh, analytics, and uh, you use Hadoop, so on and so forth. That's the first form. The second form is the uh, one that make a lot of uh, focus recently, real-time analytics. This is when you want response very fast, from milliseconds to seconds. And I mean, if you're in stock markets, nanoseconds, so rather microseconds. Okay, so that's second. The third is interactive analytics. This is, I want to look at my data, interact with this, search, issue queries, look at the data, maybe drill down, so on and so forth, right? So uh, the, if you actually, people, when they talk about real-time analytics, they put both of them a little bit together and talk about that, but to be very clear, I'm keeping it separate. The fourth one is in a way, it's not a different category, but the technologies used there are very different. These are predictive analytics, machine learning, so on and so forth. Therefore, I'm taking, because if you think it's a platform, it's a complete set. No, not like tooling, it's different set of tools. So that's the fourth category, right? So now, the analytics platform we need, need all support for all these four. And you would like to have a single consistent program model, like do something here, then do something completely different there, so on and so forth. You kind of need a one schema that goes across, right? 
Um, and uh, you, ideally, you would like uh, analytics archive, like just like a web app, analytics app that you could write, package, deploy, and the magic happens. And you need support for uh, different life cycles. It's like, what, what do I do when the data change? Right? And what do I do? Most important, what do I do if I find that, oh, too bad, my analytics algorithm was wrong. I had done a mistake. Can I go back and reanalyze that? Because uh, these algorithms are very complicated and you would make that mistake. Right? What do you do? Like, so, uh, so those kind of things. And most importantly, you think your platform should work very closely with the rest of the enterprise, your other parts, right? So, uh, okay. So uh, we, so we have done a lot of work. Actually, we, so uh, the, we have done few things. One thing is that we have dropped Hadoop and we have gone to Spark because we believed that it would be the future. It's the, uh, the Spark, because it's much, much faster, program model much simpler, and there's like a lot of community behind it. So I, we believe that uh, I, the Hadoop would be around for another five to 10 years because there's a lot of uh, vested in interest, but uh, it'll, at least in my belief, it'll disappear, right, eventually. Uh, so we have bring in Spark, uh, CP, we haven't changed. Uh, so we have I'd Lucene for support indexing, interactive analytics, so on and so forth. Uh, so it's, it's uh, but the, the real change is we were trying to make it work together as a one coherent system, right? That's, that's the main thing. So this picture tells different parts of that story. And what I would do is actually, re in the rest of the talk, I'll describe different parts of this picture. So you have the data. This data, either you store or you could directly analyze. And you have all these all four types of analytics. And this last part, this is how do you get your word out? How do you communicate, output your analytics? This is what generally decide this end and this end is what decides how your analytics platform play with the rest of the enterprise, right? So queries is issuing interactive queries. Alerts, you all understand. When something is greater than something, send an event. Visualizations, all nice pictures. You have seen enough times, I'm sure. The fourth one is not something people talk about that much. But this is very, very important because most of your analytics would send that data over to mobile apps, right? And, the, and to systems, normal systems, that's fine. You put a service and you come and get it, fine. But when you try to access these from your mobile apps, those mobile apps come out of your organization's security boundaries which suddenly changed the problem uh, significantly. Uh, so you need APIs, so on and so forth. Right, so, so let's get into the detail. Uh, okay. the, uh, the first step is you need to collect the data. Right? So we have uh, this API to collect the data that'll, that support, you it could communicate through REST, Thrift, JMS, and Kafka. Uh, we have written client for Java clients, JavaScript clients, uh, so on and so forth. Now, before collect the data, you go and define something called a stream. Right? So this is very, very important. This, what you are doing is actually you are defining the schema of the data that you would use. The, uh, you could later add other things to the schema, but if you have done a serious project, it's almost impossible to work without a schema because it's a nightmare. You will like put passing code all over the place and it's a nightmare to change. It's fine for the toddler, not for the real thing you are going to set up, right? So here you define something called a stream. Think it as if when you put data into a relational database, you define a table. 
here, think it as a table, but that doesn't have an end. It goes forever because you'll start, you'll send event forever. So you basically tell the system, okay, I'm going to send events. It would have this schema that's called a string. Okay. Uh, okay, sorry. So uh, this is the Java, how the Java client would, would like. I won't talk it through too much, but basically you set up the client to define the stream and you send events. So we have built a lot of inbuilt agents, but if you have your own system, you want to integrate to this, you, basically you, all you have to do is this, and you, you can send your events from your system to this. Okay? So that's fine. Okay? So after you send the data, oh, sorry, the one more important point actually here. These events, uh, so you, these events goes to the platform. You don't have to choose. Uh, basically, by the time you send the events, you don't choose where it goes to batch or real time, so on and so forth. Basically, you you, log, you can log into the system and basically through configuration decides. Okay, this part of data I want go to uh, real time. This goes to the batch. This goes to both, so on and so forth. It's just goes through configuration. So you have the flexibility, and it's independent of how you collect the data. Because the, generally, the, this layer of collect the data is very expensive to set up because you have to go and change a lot of places. So those decisions you could take later. OK? So if you are doing batch analytics, uh, you would write the queries using Spark SQL. Right, so Spark SQL is a SQL. Uh, basically, you describe what you need to be done using SQL-like query, right? And then here, when you do that, this part, basically the table, is mapped to your stream. For example, if you define a stream when you send the data called temperature data, then you could go to the batch layer and say from temperature data. Select and do something, right? So that's how the the program language, sorry, program model fit in, connect everything. Okay. Uh, so we'll run it through Apache Spark. Okay. And uh, if you want to do real-time analytics, the same story. The the uh, the language is not the same. It's different because the the, uh, the what you do at real time and what you do at batch are different because the at the real time, for example, you can say, okay, I define a stream from the same uh, temperature data stream from the temperature uh, that stream. You can say take a window of one minute, join it with this other stream, and so on and so forth. Again, it's SQL-like queries, right? So this is a very oops, okay important point. So we are trying to put this, uh, make the programming model uh, SQL-like. Because the nice thing about SQL is, a lot of us understand it to at least some extent, A, right? It gives us a higher level model to program, so most of the cases you could program fast um, and easily. But through uh, custom operators, when you want to do your own specific thing, basically we give, uh, you could extend and write your own custom operators. So if you like, uh, if SQL don't like, for example, let's say you're trying to calculate distance between two things, considering the curvature of the earth and so on and so forth, uh, I guess you could do it with SQL, but I mean, you won't fancy it, right? So you just write an uh, operator for that. So we have write like a lot of math operators, and it's like adding a new operator is a matter of writing a new class, ex implementing a certain interface, and go and say use this, right? So this, uh, we, we believe the SQL, uh, SQL like uh, queries would give you the best balance between uh, being compact and higher level while let you dig deep when you want to do it, but don't force you to do it all the time. Okay, so uh, this actually this is the next talk. I won't go into too much detail, but one other very interesting feature we have added is that uh, 
your real time analytics you could write using the siddhi our normal real time analytics core language right you could add annotations saying how to parallelize it then our system can automatically take that and build a strong topology right where each in each topology node we run a siddhi server and basically you could run now siddhi across multiple nodes using strom as its underneath backend i won't dig into details so who would cover that in lot of detail in next talk okay then the predictive analytics uh the the term predictive analytics uh, the okay uh, people uh, when people say predictive analytics uh, predictive analytics you try to predict but the the general problem this kind class trying to solve is that now there are certain kind of problems we know exactly how to solve it so we go to a program language like java and exactly tell you how to do it versus there are some problems you don't know how to solve it like i mean it's for example if you are asked to explain how would you detect handwritten handwritten characters Uh, not very fun if you try to do it you know it's a nightmare and how to drive a car so on and so forth so those problems it is easier to you give lot of examples to the computer and say i don't know you figure it out the underlying function decision function and give me the function i'll use that so that's the idea of predictive and uh, machine learning so on and so forth so we we support two to do it in two forms we are adding a new product called ws2 machine learner which is based on spark ml lib so i'll explain that in next slide uh, so uh, you, using that you could train and build a decision function which we call a model right and then you could basically put that model into a central place go to your cp bam esb and say that oh uh, i want to use that model i generate here and apply it for example you might build a model to detect the fraud right and then go to your transaction flow and say i want to use that fraud detection model here and the, give the value it say yes and no so on and so forth okay uh, we also support for, uh, like there's a um, specification called pmml predictive modeling markup language which is for example you could build a ml model using r and export it using pmml then we support uh, within cp using this pmml models so i mean if you don't like you want to use the machine learner but you maybe use r because there a lot of machine learning people use r so you could do that export the model bring it here and use it okay uh, so this tells a little bit about machine learner Uh, it would let you start with the data either you we can upload the data that's for dummy purposes but i mean just to demo so on and so forth but the real thing would be data would be you have published the data it's on uh, on the dash you start with that data you can take a sample uh, and you could explore you could visualize it uh, looking at different things for example here you can look at take any two dimensions actually three dimensions considered in the group by and basically look at the how the data look like look, basically it's different size of the data so on and so forth you try to understand the data then it let you go through a wizard and pick algorithms hyperparameters so on and so forth and say please run it it will run and send you a mail when it is done and then it let you take all the models you have built compare them side by side select the best one publish it to the registry right and go to bam or cp and say that oh i want to use that model on here in my normal flow okay 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 that's about decision functions now last part communication how do you get the data the first one is how to visualize and the build the dashboards now uh, so one option is you could build your own uh, dashboard right you there are libraries like vega d3 so on and so forth where you could build your uh, custom da vis dashboards and visualizations and if you are trying to do something like very very sophisticated visualization you would still have to do that 
However, from the new release, we add in a new wizard uh, that let you start with the data set. You say, so uh, you go to CP or BAM when you analyze and you create some output. It will be on table format. It has a name. It's, it's a stream. It's a stream or as we, on BAM, we call it a data table. Same thing, but different views, right? And then here you can say, oh, I, now I want to visualize this stream or this data table, okay? And then you could say, oh, by the way, my x-axis is this row column on that data table. My y-axis is this column in that data, data table, right? Actually, this doesn't show. And then you could say, actually, pick the color using that third column on this data table, or say, let the users click and drill down using these other two related columns in the data table, so on and so forth. So the, this, this concept of idea that you could take a data table and map it to different dimensions in, the, um, in a, your visualization is called visualization grammar. Right? Uh, the basically, it's done by uh, the, the group. It's, it's a research done by a group who did D3. They were from Stanford. Right, so basically, the, the the this idea of building visualizations like that is built using that concept, right? So I mean, it won't let you do very custom visualizations, but most of the things you need, you go click through, and you get what you like to have. Okay, and uh, so uh, basically, there we support a lot of ways to send alerts. Also, we, you could very easily send those to ESB, and ESB has hundreds of connectors from Twitter, like whatever you name it, there's like a huge list, right? So, um, so you basically uh, can use any of this. For example, like, okay, if you want to alert, then send a page alert, so you could use the page due to alert kind of thing to send it, page due to API to send the alert to a specific account. So on and so forth. Okay. This is the last part, which is if you are crossing the boundary of your organization with your data, suddenly you have a new set of problems. Who can access? You can't let everybody access it. Uh, how do they know how, what data is available? how much they can use, billion throttling, so on and so forth, all these policies, right? And if you follow this field, uh, integration field, you would know there's an answer for this, which is API management, right? So, uh, so basically, uh, the, uh, the last part is, this is a very, very common use case. I would want to do analytics, but I want to ex use them within my mobile app which come from out of the organization, which basically means I had to set up APIs, configure them, so on and so forth. Okay. So this is uh, uh, interesting. This, okay, this haven't released yet, but we have done it for a one customer. Basically, we were want to build it, and we, we talked, and we, they are already in production. The idea is that it's a marketplace of event streams. For example, think that you daily drive into London. The, uh, the, uh, how much delay you encounter and how you, like, that uh, activities is, might be a lot of interest for somebody who will do traffic modeling in London. Right? So maybe that's, you could set up a model where they pay you a fixed thing. You sell your data stream. Maybe anonymous. So, so the idea is that people who has interest in data to share could go to an event processing marketplace and put them in, and others come, come and create it. You could think it as it's like an API store, but it's a stream store. Okay. So uh, this we haven't done it, but uh, we have like we know it works because we did it for one customer and it's, they are already in production. If you're interested, let us know and we'll we'll roll it out uh, soon. Okay. So I'm running out of time. So I'm let me.
quickly talk about two things okay and finish off so okay what can you do with all these things of course you can do batch analytics streaming analytics in interactive analytics standard things okay so uh, i'm sure you have heard the word lambda architecture so let me quickly uh, so two scenarios right uh, so it may be very very expensive to do very detailed analytics on all the data you might choose to go and do initial real time analytics when it is interesting you go and do very detailed analytics right for example fraud when you think there's a fraud uh, occurred you might look at his history and see is it actually fraud right so we call that selective detail analysis this idea is that you combine real time and batch so that you first select use in real time and then go for batch right then this the lambda architecture lambda architecture the difference is you run the same uh, queries at the both the layers uh, let me skip because there's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of data so uh, these are some of the uh, the use cases that we the currently in production or very close to production so there are several oem solutions there's a large financial monitoring project with the bank a few smart city projects so on and so forth okay uh, okay so uh, i i'll put the slides this uh, and uh, so this is a football game uh, i won't show it because i'm running out of time but it's in youtube make sure you have a look it's it's very nice uh, okay so these are few use cases and to wrap up if you want everything you go and get das wso2 data analytics server uh, this it will have everything but if you only need real time analytics some only need real time analytics you go and get cp if you only need predictive analytics you got machine learning it's just for convenience we uh, like ship all three but if you don't need everything you got it uh thanks very much mm -hmm.